uh, I'm Jackson Arseth, and this is uh, Nathaniel Kovach. We're from Team 16176 CD Alliance. We're just going to be talking about how to engineer efficiently, because a lot of things like somebody really doesn't know about our team. Last year, we had a total budget of zero dollars, so we did not buy anything at all. We had to reuse all of our parts, and it really forced us to be super efficient with our time. So obviously, we can't afford a 3D printer, can't afford resins. We don't have any of that. So we have to really find that efficient cost-effective workarounds to uh really create a robot that can actually be here just press the button to get this so this last year we used a lot of wood in our robot so we're going to talk about that here um so we just it's a really cost-effective way to um <clears throat> create a robot i mean if you think about wood like anybody can buy wood very easily and uh, anything that we spent was going to come out of our own pockets. So we had to really make sure that it was cost effective as wood is very cheap the material. It's just easy to find. Just go to Lowe's and buy it very cheaply. So that's what we did. Uh, wood can be easily customized. That's another advantage of it. And that actually helped us out a lot because anywhere on our robot that we had wood, we could screw in very easily. And it was actually a lot easier to screw or attach any like extremities for a robot into wood than it would be to metal because you can just get a couple of wood, wood screws and then just attach them out and put it in. So that actually helped us out a lot by being efficient and that actually gave us an advantage. Uh, we use a lot of wood for prototyping and uh, just to see if our engineering theories, I guess, would uh, actually pan out and have an actual effect and work. So we use a lot of wood prototypes to do that. Um, wood is also compatible with a lot of other materials. Like it's very easy to attach wood to metal and you can uh, integrate wood into your robot very easily. One thing we did last year with our robot was we had a, a metal kind of like hole holster for the arm for our arm mechanism, but our arm mechanism was made pretty much entirely out of wood. But we were able to very easily attach the wood arm to the mechanism that held it to the robot with uh, just a couple of screws. Uh, wood is also a very light material, so that helps us out a lot with precision. And uh, with with the arm, it was very important that you had a light, a lighter arm, because that's extremely, that's much easier to control when, uh, when the arm is high in the air and you want to put, like as, as in last year's challenge, uh, put the, a cone on a pole, you need precision right there. And it's easier to do that with the lighter mechanism. Um, so these are just some household materials that we have used in FDC over the years. We've used cardboard for prototyping, plastic containers, just lightweight things, uh, straws, which we use for prototyping, uh, rubber bands and hair ties, which we used for uh, pulleys and mechanisms like that. And we use some popsicle sticks for frames and supports of prototypes. We also used a, a mason jar lid as a jumper, as a dumper, and we even won a league meet with that. So that was very helpful as a cost-effective way. And then we were able to go to the library and 3D print a, like an actual one, which was a little pricey, but it worked out. So we used the wooden arm, which I talked about earlier. And then two years ago, we used uh, some surgical tubing from the science classroom as an intake. And that actually worked very well. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about Nate on tips to engineer fish. All right. So the first step to planning your robot and beating the other teams is planning. Okay. Um, using pieces of scratch paper is extremely useful. Identify what problems you have, how you want to do it. Usually simple is better. Draw it out and often um, adapt like a, a modular design where you can take pieces and put them together, however, so that you can um, easily change out pieces instead of using an arm that reaches, perhaps an arm that, that um, pivots. But anyway, having a good basis, a solid chassis with a low center of balance. Having a good startup plan is very important. Another thing is structural integrity. Don't use, th don't use things that can break easily. Remember, on the, 
on the practice field and in games, things are going to be banging into each other. Things could slam into each other, catch on pieces of the, the siding, catch on other pieces of the robot. So you want to make sure that what you're using is either flimsy, but flexible enough to spring back into position, for example, surgical tubing, but also perhaps instead of having a bunch of exposed wiring, you could um, run some screws through a piece of plastic and make that piece of plastic into siding to, to protect what is basically the heart, the guts of your robot. All right, compatibility. So at times, there may be um, problems that you have to solve. For example, how can we um, suck in these cubes that we need to later raise and dump? How can we grab a rather slippery cone and slide it through a pole? There may be things that you might not necessarily immediately think of that can help immensely. For example, as my partner Jackson said, we used a mason jar lid, what is essentially um, a large oversized bottle cap with a hole cut through the center to grab the, the inverted cone, flip that over and dump it. <clears throat> Another important thing is our household, the household materials that you choose, you should make sure that they are durable enough. For example, um, some plastics may be too thin. The mason jar lid that we used, it was made out of um, what is pretty much steel, a thin steel, and it, it held up to use quite efficiently. All right. Household items can not only solve difficulties and niche, Your start time niche problems, was... but it can also make the judges your appreciate your um, central time. Okay, sorry about that. It can also help the judges think, huh, this team, they're pretty smart. They're able to use things that I had no, no idea you can even use, put them into the robot and make it work. For example. Uh, yes. So if you're able to cool it off, which you should be able to do with some thought, you can show them that your integration between standard FTC materials like um, aluminum beams, motors, and then pieces of wood. Um, sometimes you can even use Lego mechanum pieces to um, create a gearbox of sorts because using pre-made materials can at some times be more efficient than trying to cut out a custom piece of wood. But in general, effect, showing that you have mastery of combining materials, both things that come in the starter box and things that you can custom make, like pieces of wood, um, pieces of plastic and metal, integrating that things that you make yourself and things that come from the box. And often, the judges will see and they'll like it. All right. um, especially take note that in your engineering book, you should write down how you use household objects, how you use, um, cheap materials, different types of materials, put it together and make a good robot. Especially detail here, how your unique material choice, whether it be wood, um, plastic, metal, or anything else, describe how it solves a challenge and how instead of using something that, that's more expensive, may be a custom part that takes longer to um, ship to your location, you use something, tinkered around with it, and made it work. All right. This is the end of our presentation. Do you have any questions? Anything? Any questions that we could field? I have a quick question. Yeah. So, uh, is everything wood done in house? Like, do you have CNC machines, or like, do you use like a bandsaw? We just use a we use a bandsaw. Is that like a, a another like bandsaw? Yeah, we have a bandsaw, a collection of drills. Um, you can also, let's see what else. It's mainly the bandsaw, drills, and then um, smaller file type um, saws. Yes? Are you saying the callback with wood? With wood, um, depending on what type of wood 
it is, it can splinter. For example, we used a piece of laminated, thin laminated kind of plywood in our rack and pinion arm. Um, it was thin enough that it did not break, but I would re definitely recommend um, have backups just in case something is ripped apart, falls off, make sure that you can slap something together and get it running again. Even if it does break, uh, if you're using wood, it's pretty easy to just make a backup mm -hmm. pretty much on the spot as long as you just have the tools you just cut it with. Yeah. So, Uh, we haven't had any of them break yet, but uh, yeah. like they, we think that it might pose a challenge, and we try to we try to make a more permanent solution, like mm -hmm. uh, for like the regionals and the station yeah. and stuff. And based off that question, uh, most of the difficulties we have is either wires coming out because something collided, mm -hmm. someone's like hook or grabbing claw, or some sort of sharp thing on the other person's robot um, ripped a wire out. So make sure you're putting on appropriate shield and you don't have to make it a huge cube that can just run over other robots, but definitely making sure what are like the most important um, pieces of your robot and make sure that you'll stay put. Um, the things that came off um, with our mason jar lid, it had a, a fixed U shape. Sometimes the screws get loose, but it was not very noticeable because most most moving things we had to tighten. For example, screws that attach um, materials to our motors, things that attach materials to our servos. So make sure you're tightening those. Tightening those. Yes, ma'am. So, so how does uh, this way of uh, utilizing uh, this work this uh, kind of uh, with our CAD, we usually don't do CAD because uh, CAD is really, I mean, if you look at how professionals use CAD, professionals don't use CAD unless they're going to match produce what they're doing. So using CAD in OTC is not a good idea. I yeah. mean, it's really just a complete waste of time. <laughs> it's much easier to just sketch it out and draw it and actually do it because CAD, it's like, you don't want to spend 20 hours making a design of your robot in CAD. It's yeah. Really, it's just draw it out. It's not, it's not beneficial. It really depends on what you're going to be using the CAD for. So if you're designing 3D parts and you have a printer, CAD is definitely the way to go. You can modify it easily. Um, if you want to document your robot, um, I believe the FCT or FCT in Texas, their website has a whole bunch of like little pieces that they give you in CAD models. So you can, um, ex you can download those um, 3D images or 3D models off of the website put them onto your CAD, uh, your CAD project, and then have a digital version of your robot in order to um, show pictures, like this is what we were thinking of, this is maybe not. But for us, at least, we don't use CAD because we're mostly modifying like wood and more hands-on things instead of 3D printing things, yeah. So one of, you got a question online. Oh, yeah. Uh, where did y'all get your wood from? Um, yeah. <laughs> Lowe's, yeah. I think two years ago, we uh, used a paint stick from the Lowe's to uh, put on the cat. Yeah. Uh, the thing for us. Yeah. But we also used to have a bag of my mom's purse <laughs> put on our cat. So yeah. that was a pretty... It did work. It was actually a like, pretty good success. Um, what do you all do about, yeah. like, you know how the cones are sitting slippery? Mm -hmm. Like, what material did you use this year to like grab, grab it well? Okay. We had a linear design for a robot, as in cones come in one way. Um, from a top-down view, we would have the cone, we would grab it, and then we would flip it so that it would go into our bucket. We would raise the bucket and then dump the bucket. Yeah. So we would flip a few times. And with the pieces, the cones are slippery, as in we've noticed other... Um, some people use rubber bands yeah. on the cloth. We did some of that, but we mostly have our cone in some sort of bracket that goes around that lower rim or keep it upside down most of the time. So that's what we did. Yes? 
Um, that would be out the door, turn right, go all the way down. It's, it'll be on your right. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? Yeah, Off topic, does anybody by chance have a Mac Safe 2 charger for, for a Mac? Mm -hmm. I, actually, wow. maybe. It's, I might have it. Maybe. Maybe you'd be like my best friend forever. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll get it to you. Yeah. Yeah. If we have no more questions, um, thank you so much for your time and hope you learned something.